Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of the U.S. Pain Network, where we connect those in pain with pain clinics and providers nationwide. Today the topic involves caudal epidural steroid injections. The basics and an overview. Okay, There are three basic types of epidural steroid injections. The first one was invented back in the 1950s, so it's been 60 years that epidural injections have been used in the United States for the relief of such conditions as sciatica, radiculopathy, spinal stenosis. Anytime a nerve is pinched and it's causing inflammation to spark up and pain to shoot down either an arm or a leg, then an epidural injection is often the key to getting the pain relief down. Often it helps patients avoid surgery. Okay, The first type of epidural injection to be invented was called an interlaminar injection. I brought my trusty assistant with me today, the spinal model. Now, what you have here is the lumbar spine from the back, the sacrum, and then this is the pelvis. All right. What you see is that these are the spinous processes, which are the bumps you can feel on your back. And then this here is the lamina, which is the bone on the back of the spine. Between the lamina, you have an interlaminar space, which involves some soft tissue. Okay, That's where the needle goes for an interlaminar injection. Now, what the pain management doctor will do is they will feel for a loss of resistance as the needle goes through. And once they experience that, the needle is usually in the epidural space around the spinal cord where the nerve root is being pinched. Okay. So, and they usually use fluoroscopy, which is a real-time form of x-ray, to see that. That's the first kind. The second type of epidural is called a transferaminal epidural steroid injection, and that goes more out to the side, where, see these uh, yellow? Those are the nerve roots coming out. I'll show it to you from the side. This hole where they come out is called a foramen, okay? A transferaminal injection actually goes into the area where the nerve root is coming out of the foramen. And that's where the pinching is usually occurring. So a transferaminal puts the steroid medication closer to the point of actual pinching, um, and the results of that over the last decade have been great. Okay. Now, caudal epidural steroid. It's the third type. It's the easiest type of epidural injection to perform. Um, now, if you look down at the lumbar area and then the sacrum here, the needle goes at the very bottom of the sacral spine through this opening. It's kind of difficult to see it, I'm sure, but that's called the sacral hiatus, okay? And that's an opening that allows steroid and numbing medication to be injected and to blossom and gravitate up for um, multiple areas of nerve pinching. So it's not an exact focal placement, it actually can cover multiple levels and that's one of the best benefits of a caudal injection is that it can treat multiple levels such as with spinal stenosis where nerve root pinching is occurring at more than one area. Okay? A second benefit of caudals is that they work well for when a person has uh, had a spinal fusion with instrumentation in place. It can be very difficult to perform the other two types of epidural injections, but not a caudal, okay? The medication goes in the hiatus, and it graduates up, and it can fill in those areas that would have been very difficult to reach with an uh, interlaminar or a transferaminal, okay? So it does work well when a person has, say, failed back surgery syndrome um, and having back and leg pain. Okay. A third thing that caudals can be used for is just a good old herniated disc with sciatica in the lumbar spine. So, you know, you can use the other two, but, I mean, this is the easiest injection to perform. If the pain doctor is comfortable with that and that's what they were trained with, they can do that. Okay. And the results have been shown in the literature to be uh, just as effective as with the other two types. You do have to inject a higher volume of steroid medication and numbing medicine, medicine because it's not going right at the area of pinching, right? You're actually putting it in and it's sort of blossoming up. So that is a little bit of a downside. Well, last year in Pain Physician, they looked at a whole review of over a hundred studies that looked at caudal epidural steroid injections, and they wanted to see what, how well do these really work? Here's what they found, okay? 
For regular sciatica conditions where a nerve root is being pinched, they work really well for short and long-term results. All right? Each injection averaged a few months of pain relief. So for a series of injections, say three injections, it, we're looking at about a year of pain relief. Now, if those three injections are necessary every two weeks for, say, a six-week block, it may be that three to six months later, the person needs another series you know, to get pain relief for a whole year. But it was very good evidence for short and long-term results. Okay? For spinal stenosis and for failed back surgery syndrome issues, the results were good for short and long-term pain relief. They were excellent for disc herniation, but good for spinal stenosis and failed back surgery. And for good old degenerative disc disease and facet arthritis, where a person was having simply back pain, the results were fair for short and long term. They weren't non-existent, you know, it didn't provide you know, insignificant benefit, but it wasn't a home run or a slam dunk, right? It was just fair, okay? So the risks of these procedures are exceptionally low. They're done as an outpatient. You don't need IV sedation, okay, unless the person has claustrophobia or severe anxiety. Uh, the injection's quick. Um, and usually the, the needle goes in the, uh, after all the numbing, and the, the doctor will inject some contrast medicine to make sure that it flows properly, and then the numbing and the steroid medicine is injected, and then you know, you're good to go. Okay? The risks are very low. There's a small risk of infection, small risk of some bleeding, small risk of nerve injury, and a small risk of an, uh, allergic reaction to the medicines that are used. All right? Uh, there also can be some cortisone side effects, which is usually transient and may include um, elevation of blood sugars, uh, water retention, some weight gain, maybe some facial flushing. That usually resolves within one to three days. Okay? So overall, it's been a very good addition to the uh, repertoire of pain management treatments in this country, and it's very heavily used because of the high reward compared to the low risk. All right. I'm Dr. David Green, CEO of the U U.S. Pain Network. Please check out our website, uspainnetwork.com. We connect those in pain with pain providers nationwide. We also have a lot of education on the site, including conditions, treatments, and videos. You're watching one right now. Thank you very much. U.S. Pain Network. Your pain stops here.